Hey, good evening, everybody. We've got a, we've got a good show for you tonight. Two, uh, we've got back-to-back -back artist shows. We did uh, Joe Staten yesterday, and tonight we've got uh, George Pratt, who uh, is uh, a favorite of mine and a favorite of my co-interviewer tonight. We've got uh, this. You've got the pleasure of not just having myself, but the the amazing Kazra Gambari is going to join me. He's already on camera. He doesn't know it yet, but uh, welcome, Kazra. I, I appreciate Kazra lined this up for uh, for us tonight. He and he and George have known, known each other for quite some time, and so that's how we've uh, we've managed to get this uh, interview here for you this evening. Yeah, yeah, and 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 George started things off with a bang by sending me seven hundred images for the interview tonight. Ah, well, George <laughs> is in the green room, so you, here's your chance to complain <laughs> to him about sending you seven hundred. Oh, I have, I have. He's over oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Hey, George, how are you tonight? Hey, thank you. Good. Well, it's very nice to have you here with us. Uh, you know, we got to see, uh, we, we got to meet each other at the uh, Frazetta Museum a couple months ago when you had uh, your gallery show there with the, with uh, James. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, except James was there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And James is probably not in the chat tonight, so he won't take offense at that. Yeah. <laughs> We just got back from the Brandywine, James oh, yeah? and I, and uh, Michael Marsicano. That was fun. Never been. It's it's a great trip. Well, if you go to Ilixcon, it shouldn't be too far away, right? I don't no, know. I don't, I don't know where that, that is in, in relation. I think it's pretty close. Ilixcon's where, uh, Bill? Where in Pennsylvania? You know, I always want to say Allentown, but I don't think it's Allentown. It's, it's uh, like... The is it Reading? Reading. Thank you. It was in Allentown and now it's in Reading. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's not too far from there. But yeah, I've never made it. I never went to the Frazetta Museum all the times I was driving past there. When I, I used to live in Northeast Ohio, George. So I was, when, and I'd go to IX and never made a point of getting over there. So I, wow. uh, I'll continue to kick myself for that. <laughs> Have, I, want, uh, I, I assume you've been. To the Presetta Museum in, in uh, Pennsylvania, but it was closed. <laughs> it was a far side cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Kaiser, why don't you help us uh, get this thing started to take us on this deep dive down uh, George Pratt's career? Because I know that, uh, like you said, you had 700 images to peruse before we got here. And and the thing is, everybody, I just have to let you know, we're going to have to have George uh, back because George is an, inc as far as uh, an art collection, I got to see uh, some of the images from his art collection. It's amazing, but I don't think we're going to get uh, the opportunity to talk too much about that tonight, George, but uh, but maybe, you know, occasionally, but but boy, you've got uh, one hell of a, an art collection. That's all <laughs> I have to say, uh, you know, because obviously you don't have a calf gallery as far as I know. And so people probably, I, a lot of that art I've never seen before. So, you know, I think we'll probably will have to have you back on uh, sometime cool. in the future. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, George, Beaumont, Texas, right? 1960, yep. October. Now you've, you've, you've talked, we've talked a lot about, well, a lot of things, but your childhood as well. And uh, if you could talk a little bit just about growing up in, in Texas and, you know, thinking about Houston and conventions and, and yeah. dreaming about what's kind of over the hill and kind of getting over the hill at some point. Well, I, you know, uh, I had two, two open heart surgeries when I was a kid. And so I was in the Houston or Texas Children's Hospital. And the Batman TV series had just started. And I was hooked on that thing. And so my, my family saw how into that I was and started bringing comic books. And that's how I got into that. And then my uh, best friend, Lum, and I uh we're all about comics i mean we were constantly you know buying everything we could and we both uh like in high school we started putting out like a fanzine and sent out you know we i think we had like a subscription base of we had i think we were selling like around say selling but you know 200 copies or something like that it was all every, the first month wow. uh, first sunday of every month we'd go to his father's uh insurance office and like we had uh you know we would type up the stories on the selectrics and we had the art all done and we would do a paste up and xerox it staple it and uh it was like 
some of the best times ever. And a lot of over a lot of a lot of uh, you know slumber parties where we made movies. We were super eight junkies and uh, and uh, you know just drew and read comics and just ate it all up, you know. And uh, yeah, then you'd go to Houston Con, and it was always a Star Trek comic book con. And uh, but man, you, you know, you, everybody it was the first time I ever got to meet like you know the real uh, professionals doing those things. So it was like uh, George Perez, Gil Kane, uh, Frank Brunner. Uh, but I was like totally at that time too. We were freaks about you know Neil Adams, uh, Bernie Wrightson, Kaluta, those guys, and wanting to just read you know just wanting to grab everything we could of all that material, you know. Now, Bill, this might annoy people, but I think you have control of uh, this huge amount of images that we have, right? <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, and yeah. and I know that you know we got the first one. I think is Action Lad, the uh, Star Spangled. <laughs> did, did, did this have did this have a subscriber base of two hundred people? No, this was okay. a, this was Lum and I goofing around, wanting to start, you know, and um, yeah, no, it was just us. I think we were like thirteen or fourteen years old, and looking at Neil Adams, you know, Superman, and messing around with. <laughs> So actually, this is oh, this is even earlier than I thought. This is seventy three ish. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All <laughs> right. Yeah, and hand colored. And then I was lucky. I had a cousin, Jake, who on my uh, from my dad's brother, and uh, he was the he was like the the wild child, you know, and like was the uh, he he would give me all his underground comics. And his, uh, he introduced me to Creepy and Eerie and Doc Savage and the Frazetta Conan books and all that stuff. So Zap Comics, like I was, he was giving me his old Zap Comics and, and all that stuff, you know. And my parents had no clue that I was reading this stuff. But uh, I loved it. You know? <laughs> were, were, you, were you actually unhappy with the first version of this? So you redrew it and then hand colored it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tough when you're your own editor oh man <laughs> oh that's great well, that one in lum i guess he, uh he definitely did the color and he may have done the inking on that one i'm not sure oh nice that's right and and i think there's the next one um uh, uh bill i think you kind of moved on to i've seen a lot of this obviously yeah. and and, and we're, we're working on something that we'll talk about later but this is I've seen a lot of this, George, but I wasn't actually sure about this one because I don't know if you're lifting from somebody here or it's kind of based on oh, or yeah, what, right. but then you did something with Lum here with Batman. This is like early George Pratt Batman. Yeah, no, I, that's a, I think it's a, if I'm looking at it now, it looks like a John Byrne something. And that's how I learned how to draw was basically copying my art heroes, you know, like, uh, and I was using a brush uh, and dip pens and trying to figure it out, you know, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I didn't trace anything. I could look at it and, and copy it. And that's how I learned how to draw, you know, and I, when I got to art school, I was petrified because I didn't really know how to draw, you know? And so, but I had looked, you know, I had really good taste. I was into like, you know, the studio guys and Craig Russell and Neil Adams and, you know, all these people burn. I was a big burn fan. And, uh, you know, when I got into the life drawing class the first day, I, you know, I knew what I was looking for, but, uh, but it was scary. You know, <laughs> we need a, we need a dramatic reading bill of this page, especially yes, the do. editor. The editor's note is, is wow. Talk about ending a page one entry here. The <laughs> dramatic events depicted in this story. Before the origin of Robin. There you go. <laughs> The next image, Bill, please. It's I think the that's uh, that's you and Love. Yep. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Rest his soul. And yeah. and uh, if you will, Bill, I'm sorry. But we're gonna figure out a better way to go. Maybe I'll just say I'll do an Albert Moy Moy doc next. Yes. Next. <laughs> so fanzines. Yeah. Yeah. So we were xeroxing these. Uh, and yeah, we didn't know there was an infinity 
fanzine already out there, except that uh, I met Kenneth Smith at a Houston con and struck up a sort of a limited sort of letter writing pen pal thing a little bit. <clears throat> and he, he said, Oh, you know, there's already an infinity. Why don't you guys, you know, change your name to, I think we were calling ourselves prototype publishing. <clears throat> and, but we were like, hell no, we're keeping infinity. <laughs> so we just kept doing it, but it was such a, you know, it was a garage deal, you know, <clears throat> you can show two more. The next one, there's a couple more that, uh, yeah, there you yeah, go. On the left, well, these two, well, the one on the left was the one of the few things where we actually took it and had it printed, printed, that cover, you know. <clears throat> you, you paid money out of your pocket for that then. Yeah. Man, but it was like you were we were so excited. We're like, oh my God, it's a real print, you know. Uh -oh. Molly Pratt says hello from Texas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Molly. Um, and I'm sorry, the next one. Here, now, this is this is a little bit more kind of typical of the uh, sort of, you know, preschool, uh, going to art school, you learning how to draw stuff. I mean, you did a lot of these sequential I stories. A, yeah, I did this one. This particular story I wrote and drew. And again, you know, it's all rips, right? Swipes. But it was I did <laughs> I did three versions of this thing. The first one was really not very good. The second one was a little better. This one, like I started really getting, you know, quote unquote chops down, uh, looking at, you know, like you can tell this, this explosion there. That's a, that's a Craig Russell up top is a John Byrne. Uh, there's Neil Adam. I mean, everybody's in there, you know, but I was getting my inking down. I had a Leroy lettering kit. So I did the lettering like the old EC books. Um, and was really getting, you know, a handle, a better handle on the brush and the, and the dip pen. And storytelling, big time. Yeah, and uh, and even in that second page there, the third panel, uh, using rapidographs, a la, you know, Terry Austin. So, I love the Burn Austin stuff. Yeah, join the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But at the time, you know, I was reading all that. I was a big Marshall Rogers Batman fan. Um, man, I, well, I was reading everything. You know, I, uh, the Kill Raven series was really high on my list. Uh, Star Lord, that first, you know, black and white, all that stuff. So, that stuff. are we are we up to about seventy seven, something like seventy? Yeah, seventy six, seventy seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sorry, Bill. Next, uh, and then, and then I, I remember I saw this one, and I was like, "Wow, this is all. This is this is me looking at Cuber, me swiping Greg Irons." Okay. So again, I was getting all the my cousin's underground books, and man, and it was funny. I on my online class. So yeah, this is '77. Uh, on my online class yesterday, I was talking up. Uh, his work, Greg Irons, died way too young, and the work is just just phenomenal, you know. But you wrote this, George. Yeah, you're, you're writing, you're writing, you're, and obviously you're selecting the panel layouts. You're 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 going through <laughs> stacks of comics and from memory, and taking some P. Craig and and Neil and John and so on, and and well, placing them, and then. Yeah, that was a that was a you know if you want to call it a skill that I had, you know. I knew where I had this, like, I don't know if I'd call it photographic, but I knew, I knew my comics, you know, and I knew where to find this stuff. Like, oh man, I need a guy doing this. And I could like I could pull it out of my head, you know, like what issue, what page roughly that I would find that image, you know, but that stuff was making such an impression on me. Uh, anything in a comic book, but again, you know, back at that time, Comics, I mean, just art was everywhere. It was on the cover of all the books. It's on the covers of magazines. It, you know, comics were the tip of the iceberg, you know. And uh, and I was just infatuated with anything in print, you know. And I, and I got that bug, you know, really from my dad, too, who was a big, like, voracious reader. Uh, and had some, we had, you know, he had subscriptions to, you know, New Yorker, Scientific American, Time, Life, Look, 
you know, everything, you know, and so surrounded by, and then he was also, you know, his medical journals, he had his, you know, science, he was totally into science and he had also, um, he also read, you know, the same kind of trash I picked up from my dad, which is John D. McDonald and those covers by McGinnis, you know, and Rex Stout, all that stuff was just like, I was like an addict, you know. I didn't, you, was your father a, a, a GP or a pediatrician? He was a GP, he was yeah? A GP, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I was really lucky. My, my parents were real supportive of all this stuff, you know, except when, except when my grades got bad, then my dad would really, really lose it and talk about burning all my GD comics, you know, and all that. I would like freak out, you know, so, but <laughs> I mean, at some point, I mean, they knew that you had the bug and that it was voracious. You had complete recall. You couldn't get enough. You're kind of the same way now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, every, anyone who knows you knows that, but there was going to be a decision about, going to school and that's usually where the parents usually draw a line there like you know as an immigrant it's like you're going to go get a phd or an md phd you're not going to do anything else right yeah so you, had, you know you, the art school idea what 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 was the what was the family dynamic and discussions and decision making around school and where to go well i was you know i, I was really into art i really wanted to do it but you know it's one of those things too where you don't know if you can really do it, like, is that a real job? You know I mean? And, um, and again, I was incredibly fortunate, you know, that my, my father and mother wanted to pay for my education. And that was a major, you know, obviously a major step up for me. And I went to one year of university at, uh, Southwestern university in Georgetown, Texas. And I just did liberal arts basically i didn't do any art except on my own in my in my room <clears throat> and my my roommate at the time uh ferris rookstool was into he wanted to be a medical illustrator and uh he he eventually left school but he became a, an fbi agent <laughs> and uh it's one of the leading kennedy assassination uh experts and stuff but anyway he uh, so we we had drawing boards in there. The room was so, so small, you know, and then when he left, I got to keep the room without another roommate, which was awesome. But um, but they had a really good art department there, but I didn't do any art except on my own. And um, I joined the fraternity. You know, I did. I had a girlfriend and was all set. And then um, I remember my dad. They went on a trip to New York and he had seen and he had heard of it, you know, Pratt Institute because of the name. And he said, look, we went and they even went by Marvel Comics uh, on a trip and they the place was closed. But they but Marie Severin was there. Wait, your, your, your mom and dad went there without you when they went to New York. Oh, yeah. They were on a it was a medical either a vacation slash medical thing. OK. And they came back and they're like, oh, you know, we talked to this lady, Marie Severin. And and she uh, so I wrote her a note. And she sent me all this stuff, you know, it was like Xeroxes of Mike. She Zeroxes. had Xeroxes for people to ink back then. Yeah. To look well, to look at their pencils. Yeah. Look at their pencils and, and all that. And, um, and so I sent her a portfolio and she wrote, gave me like sort of a critique, you know, but my dad was like, look, you know, he really, he really wanted me to go to film school. And he said, look, I, you know, I really want to help you with college. And he said, I, you know, I'll, I'll you, you go to Southern Cal study film or go to Pratt, you know, and and I was like, well, I don't know. You know, I've got a girlfriend. I'm I'm in the I'm in the frat. You know, <laughs> he's like, look, he goes, you do. That's fine. If that's what you want, he goes. But, you know, you've done this your entire life. And here it is. If you are serious about this, this is here it is. But that's up to you. And I was like. Yeah, I better do this. And uh, but I, you know, man, I was I was lazy, and I had my uncle Joe, my dad's brother, and my cousin Jake, the wild child, who gave me all the comics. They came to visit, and you know, Pratt to do a test, and uh, and so I was like, kind of putting it off, and I was messing with. I did some things, and they were like, "You need to finish this now." And they sat, they sat there and forced me to finish all that stuff and get it out. And I got accepted. Um, 
So yeah. Wacky. So, uh, Bill, I'm sorry. Uh, if we go to the 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 school folder, I think it starts with a, a photo. A um. Was it the next one? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah we we didn't see that one. That was sort of a a a, a BWS uh, pre rational oh, thing. But there you go. That was me inking like like uh, Barry Windsor Smith, but it was yeah. Craig Russell, Kill Raven. Right, figure. Kill Raven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And this is, uh, we were in school, and uh, that's me with on the left with Dan Green, Jeff Jones, and Bernie Wrightson out landscape painting on the New York Reservoir. And it, what, who you don't see is Alan Spiegel, Kent Williams, and Jay Muth. Right. Um, we were all there, and it was like, that was like, you know, we went to see Jeff at the New York Comic Con. And uh, I think it was at the Roosevelt Hotel. And Jeff was like God to us, you know, all those studio guys. And we heard he was going to be there. So we went and uh, showed Jeff a couple of pieces of our stuff. And uh, first thing he was like, oh, man, you know, I, I showed him a uh, Solomon Kane that I had done from one of his drawings. And he's like, oh, I've never seen this in oil before. This is cool, you know. And how'd you get this color, this background color and whatever? And then he was with Carol Zaloom. And he said, uh, man, you guys should come up and go landscaping with us, with me. And we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like getting asked to go paint with Rembrandt to us, you know. And um, so we, man, you know, well, on that first day, too, I had I had some watercolors with me and stuff. And Jeff had, you know, this all that beautiful stuff laid out. And I was like, I was like, you know, hey, would you be up for a swap? <laughs> and he said, yeah, you know, yeah, pick, you know, pick something out. And I was like, oh, my God. So I got this really cool. Uh, we swapped watercolors. And then we wasted, you know, no time getting up there to go visit uh, to get, you know. And before that, though, we um, Roy Crinkle had passed away. And we were at another con and Bernie Wrightson showed up and he was there for the funeral, but he, but he sort of popped into the con and, and we were like, Oh my God, it's Bernie Wrightson. So went up and introduced ourselves um, and, and told him that, you know, Jeff had invited us to come up and paint. And he said, Oh man, he goes, well, you know, when y'all get up there, have Jeff call me, you know? Uh, and he goes, and, uh, and man, that'd be fun. And uh, so, yeah, we got there and, he called Bernie and Bernie brought over. And this is like what's so crazy to me, because I don't know when they released the, uh, you know, the, um, the, what is it? The stand illustrations that he had done, but he had all that with him and he brought it and showed it to us. And we were like, you know, getting our minds blown. And um, yeah. And then going out and painting was like awesome. And Jeff was uh, living in a trailer at the bottom of a mountain in front of a river and sharing it with uh, Jay Muth at the time and was working on the paintings for the uh, Carl Edward Wagner Kane book, Book of Kane. And uh, so that was like, man, to see those things taking shape, you know, and uh, and then, you know, we woke up at the crack of dawn and uh, we're in Kent's car, I think or my, mine or Kent's, I don't remember. And uh, Bernie was telling ghost stories mm -hmm. and it was like going down that mountain and it was just, and it was a typical, it was perfect Bernie weather, right? It was like this misty, dark, sun wasn't up yet. And there was mist creeping over the road. And Bernie was telling all these wild horror stories, you know, ghost stories that he witnessed, the stuff he actually saw. And we were, it was perfect, you know? Um, so that was just like, you know, we were in heaven, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, the, uh, uh, for school, you went in, uh, I thought you went in maybe even a fine art before illustration. Is that right? No, it was, uh, Kent and I, we were in, uh, there was myself, Kent Williams, Mark Torello was there, Scott Hanna, uh, John Van Fleet, Peter Cooper was around. Dan, Dan Klaus. Dan Klaus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's um, 
and we really all wanted to do comics, but it was a no-no. You know, the school would not support it and would, would, didn't want to talk about it. It was like a big, you know, no. But um, we all wanted to do that. I remember Peter Cooper trying to get Kent and I to, to ink Richie Rich comics and stuff because he said, oh, man, it's great. He goes, you can watch TV and ink Richie Rich. And we, and we were like, what? Well, you know, <laughs> um, but um, we were in illustration. And luckily, you know, we had we had some really good teachers in illustration. We had, you know, Dave Pasolacqua, sure. um, Jerry Contreras, Don Albright. And we had um, Baron Story was was huge because he actually got the whole comic thing. Because he's like, he goes, comic guys? He goes, yeah, absolutely. Because they draw everything. They can draw anything. And uh, and then we told him, we, you know, we were going out uh, painting with Jeff. And he was like, oh, my God. He goes, and he like a hermit or whatever, you know. And, but um, he got it. And so, but it, I forget. It was like uh, our, well, I see, I only went three years. They went four. But uh, we switched, Kent and I, to fine art, thinking, well, we want to draw and paint, you know, and it's called drawing a painting. They were really, you know, uh, protective. It was like, you know, their turf anyway. So we signed up for that. We switched and that's when they tell us, oh, wow, really? God, you guys had, we had like uh, scholarships for you guys to and illustrate. And we're like, really? You know, like, so we switched into fine art, which was a big mistake because they really didn't teach us anything, you know, so uh you know be free man you know we're like what you know <laughs> you be free i've noticed free. i've noticed a lot of fine artists uh fine artists can write a little bit better yeah. than, uh, <laughs> can, illustrate. Yeah. uh bill the next one uh uh we've got uh i think an early convention handbill with you and kent yeah yeah we used to we did the convention circuit we would drive throw stuff in my car or kent's car he had a he had a volkswagen uh, bug and we would go to we would drive to Boston uh, we went to a whole bunch of, we had a big setup this Kent had this giant metal contraption that we would put up and we would throw you know we were totally into the studio so we would throw cloth over it we had a cow skull with peacock feathers coming out of it and we would oh, nice. put work up <laughs> yeah so. <laughs> you don't have any photos of that huh no I, yeah no I wish I've never seen that yeah, so this is Kent so on the left and uh, you on the right. Yeah. Yep, and those two drawings were used on St. Mark's Comics bags and things. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. St. Mark's Comics is still there, isn't it? I haven't been in so long. That's uh, I'm going to go see my daughter uh, for her pre college and we're going to, I'll see if they're still around. And I'm sorry, next. Uh, just to keep up, uh, keep this going. This is uh, this is a pretty early painting yeah this that. is this is painted on my drawing board those right. clipboards you know yeah and i was doing the frisetta thing with the 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 wood showing through as a color and kent posed for that so we always called it solomon kent so and kent. uh yeah <laughs> and uh next we just go through a couple of school period so ones was, uh, kent and i and ed lee uh, we wanted to try and get work at DC and Marvel and all this. And so we did fake covers and got an appointment to go to DC comics. And we went as a team and uh, we, there, I forget who it was that was sitting outside in the waiting room. And we had our, you know, our portfolios and this guy was like, man, what do you guys got? You know? And so we were pulling stuff out and he's like, Oh man, he goes, you guys are in, you know, y'all are in. And uh, Dick Giordano took us in and he says, well, this is right before Christmas too. And he says, you, he goes, look, he goes, all right, you, yeah, come on in. You guys sit down. And he's like, y'all know you're not ready for this. Goes, <laughs> First mistake you did was coming in together because now I may like one of y'all's work and I, but I can't like, you know, I can't do that to the three of you, you know? <laughs> so we're like, you know, oh, and he goes, That's look, this isn't a playground. This is a business, you know? And man, he kind of read us the riot act. And so we, I remember walking out of that place that was uh, 666, or I don't remember. Uh, and we were so broken. <laughs> we were, I'm like, man, yeah, we all, and we knew we were all leaving right then to go get on planes and stuff and go to go home, you know, and we wouldn't see each other till the next, next semester. We were so just 
destroyed. You know, that <laughs> we didn't get work. You know, but he, yeah, he was telling you what he thought you guys needed to hear. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know, and look at it. This is me looking at. This is. Uh, is that Wrightson in the bottom left? No, that's Jose Ortiz, and then the car- the the Seder is Landecker. Wow, yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and George, this is eighty. This is just as or just before the heavy metal heavy metal spot elo. No, uh, wait, oh, the spot elo. Yeah, I think that's eighty two, maybe. Right, eighty one, eighty two. Right. So if yeah. you go next. Uh, you know, you did end up getting oh. an apprenticeship with Marshall Rogers. Yeah, we went to Kent and I. We, we the what is it called? The uh, New York Comic Art Gallery. Yeah. That was just this little thin thing, you know. Uh, it was in the village, and <clears throat> we went because Kent was a was a huge Paul Galassi fan, and Paul was supposed to be there, and Marshall. They were both going to be signing books and stuff. And so we went. Galacy was a no-show, <clears throat> and and I was such a Marshall Rogers fan for the Batman stuff. And so I remember asking him, I was like, hey, you know, have you ever thought of hiring an assistant? And he said, you know, I have thought about that. <clears throat> he goes, why, do you want the job? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I didn't have any art on me, you know. <clears throat> and he goes, well, all right. He goes, okay. He goes, well, here. He goes, uh, bring your stuff. He was working at Continuity. Uh, outside of Grand Central. <clears throat> and he said, you know, bring your work and let me scope it out and we'll see. And I'm like, all right. And so I went to continuity, man. It's a long jaunt from Brooklyn, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, took, I had this giant, you know, <laughs> this fake leather portfolio that I loved originals around it and took everything up there and he went through it and he goes, okay. He goes, yeah, you're hired. I'm like, oh my God, you know? And he said, uh, first thing he goes, I've got, I want you to take this home and work on this. And it was the spirit jam. And he said, I need a chain link fence here. I need this background here. Um, he goes, these panels, he goes, I want you to draw these panels. It, it needs three hoodlums, whatever. So I drew me and Kent and Ed, you know, as the, as the hoodlums. And, uh, I was petrified to even touch those pages. And, uh, I worked, I don't know how long I worked for Marshall, I did the back. I did a lot of background stuff and Zipatone. It was really did, particular. About did he that. did he buy you the Zipatone, or did you have to buy it yourself? No, he he supplied everything. Oh, that's good. And um, but so I was going to classes, and then but I would go and work like almost an all nighter at the at continuity. He had me coming in at night because he didn't want me to have to pay rent to Neil, and so. But I, you know, but I could walk around and see those, the Neil Adams, Conan watercolors, you know, and Bernie had done, uh, I remember the freak show pages were there. Mm -hmm. And I remember going, just like flipping through those pages, like just mind blown. And, um, but you know, there was Neil's uh, picture morgue. And so he would say, I need a, like a, you know, 1970, whatever car. Uh, and a chain link fence, blah, blah, blah. And I would have to go to the morgue and pull out those files and project them and trace all that stuff down and ink, ink all the stuff Marshall didn't want to have to do, you know? Um, so I worked on the coyote series and, uh, and Marshall was getting ready to do Madame Xanadu or something. And so he said, Hey, he goes, here, he goes, take these. He had a, he had a bookcase that was built above his drawing table around the little room. And it was full of architectural books. And he said, uh, take some of these home. They were Paris rooftop books. Nice. And he goes, I want you to do a whole page of Paris rooftops. And so I did that. Brought And, man, I was, like, trying to impress Marshall. I was p- plotting all the points. You know, I had string. You know, I was trying to really blow his mind. And I took it to him. And he goes, okay. He was looking at it. He goes, uh, wow. He goes, so you, like, you plotted all this, right? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And he goes, okay. He goes, Look, he goes, you know, that's really great if we lived on a perfectly flat world. <laughs> goes, you know, he goes, but we don't. He goes, uh, buildings are like people. They they have gestures. They settle. They they move. They shift. He goes, so I want you to go home and do it again, but I just want you to eyeball it. And, man, it was like such a great lesson. And it was like that that version was so much better. than the, I don't even have the first one anymore, which I kept, wish I kept it. But anyway, this is a piece he did. We, we, uh, 
we did a, uh, a, a comic magazine while we were in school called Dark Storm. And uh, Marshall contributed this and had me ink up. I think he did the figure and I did the background. <clears throat> um, a la Mooka, Craig Russell, you know. And um, so that was like one of the, the uh, pieces in the magazine. It was fun. We had Boris gave us a piece to put in. Kent and I bumped into him at uh, Forbidden Planet. We were like, oh, my God. You know, and we told him we were doing this thing. He goes, oh, yeah, man, it, you know, here, I'll send you something. And uh, Charles Vest did a, had a piece in there, and it was a lot of fun. I thought I remembered you saying something like after you worked with Marshall, um, you realized that – at the very least, that doing a monthly comic book was not in your DNA. Yeah. No. Well, besides the fact that I, you know, I don't think I had the drawing chops or the yeah, but it, but it was a wake up call because I was, we and we would butt heads a little bit because Marshall <clears throat> saw it at it purely as entertainment, and I was coming from the studio side, like oh no, this is an art form and this is you know and and you know we wouldn't like, like butt heads, but we definitely had two different outlooks about where we were going, you know, and, and Kaluta actually was the first artist that I called when I got to New York. <clears throat> and, um, I was petrified on the phone. I called the operator and asked for if there was a number for Michael Kaluta and she like, oh, hold on, I'll connect, you know, and, <clears throat> and, uh, I was using the pay phones down in the, in the uh, dorm. And, uh, it was, it was Mike. And I was like, is this Mike Kaluta? Yes. I'm like, the Mike Kaluta? <laughs> the real Mike Kaluta? Yeah. The, the comic. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, can I come up, you know, do you let people come to your studio? And he's like, sure. And I'm like, when can I come to your studio? You know? And I went on a Saturday morning, eight in the morning. I got there, uh, uptown Manhattan. And like, was there until eight that night. And, we, Vest was, like, and Be Charles Vest was there, yeah? Yeah, that, and I was ringing the bell, and I saw Vest's name. Like, oh, man, two guys for one, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, spent the whole day there. We were on the floor, you know, Kaluta and I was showing me, like, uh, the, the Slav epic stuff, and, you know, and we were playing guitar, and it was just like, like, he knew what it meant, you know, to 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 meet one of your heroes. And, like, he man, he made that day so friggin' special, you know. <clears throat> it was awesome. So our next yeah. one, um, um, if you will, Bill. I will. Yeah, the the school stuff. If I remember right, you you and Kent were getting work prior to. I mean, you were still in school. I mean, not just the Marshall stuff, but this is a this is this is published in heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah, eighty two, and it was. Uh, you know, at this time we were already painting with Jeff. And I would, I remember going up to heavy metal and John Workman was the editor <clears throat> and uh, art director. And it was this mutual love of Jeff's work, you know, cause I was telling him that we were, he was like, really? And we were, and we started talking about stuff and he's like, Oh, come on in, you know? And he would pull out the newest uh, I'm age from Jeff. And we would like, just like, you know, fanboy out. And, uh, and he kept saying, he goes, I'm going to, I'm going to find you something to do. And I'm like, great. Yeah. You know, awesome. And finally he was just like, you know what? He's like, just do something and I'll publish it. So this is what I, I would, so I wrote a bunch of poetry and, it, you know, just put a <clears throat> drawing in there and you can see the Jeff influence big time on there, you know, and Mark Torello's girlfriend at the time did the lettering. She was, she could do this beautiful lettering. And so I had her letter all those things for me. And, and he published it and that was the start. And then after that, he just said, Hey, you know, do me some half pagers. And so I did several of those. And then, uh, he did, he used one of my, this mermaid thing that I think Mike Mignola still may own. We swapped and, uh, it was, a yeah, as a, as a contents header for uh, heavy metal. Yeah. And then my, right. my senior, what would have been my senior year at school, my senior project, <clears throat> was uh, I was approached by Steve Ringenberg to do this like uh, bounty hunter thing he was he would he had, been, he had created called Sin Wolf, yeah. and um, so I worked that up and then 
actually we got that published in heavy metal which was pretty awesome yeah it, steve it, was at the presetta opening yeah 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 if, if i remember right kent got some kent did Epic. like some of the earliest work was briar rose like a briar rose painted story in heavy metal yeah, before that before that i wrote a thing that he illustrated for eclipse and i did a i did a another contents header for eclipse and then i wrote a story called primeval that he did right. that was published in epic right and then i think briar rose was later for epic did you meet archie goodwin back then oh yeah uh, and i was doing i had i lucked out my one of my illustration teacher don albright was ray bradbury's bibliographer and he's like, oh, I'm going to go see Ray this weekend. I'm like, oh, my God, I would give him my Ray Bradbury books, and he would get them personalized for me. <clears throat> and I asked him, I said, hey, you know, do you think Ray would let me do an adaptation? And he goes, I'll ask him. And he goes, but I bet he will. And I and so I uh, started illustrating The Wish, and Kent posed, and my, my, my form and space teacher, composition teacher posed. And I got really far on it, and Kent was doing the lettering for me. Uh, he was way better at that than I was. And I took it in to show Archie and he said, man, he goes, I, I mean, I really like your drawing style and all this. He goes, but it's just too many, too many headshots. And uh, which was a great, another great storytelling lesson, but you know, so it just, it, but it took the wind out of my sails and I just stopped. You know? <laughs> I was like, all right, screw it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but I, I didn't send you all any of those images. I don't think, but I had, Oh, you did. No, you yeah. did. Yeah, you did. It yeah, was in the seven hundred. No, that was in the six hundred and thirty-two uh, that were left behind. <laughs> All right. I was yeah. doing big pages back then. I was using watercolor paper, you know, arches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I, I guess, I guess we'll we'll speed up the timeline a little bit. I know that uh, that after you left school, you stayed in New York, and you were doing a lot of oil painting and I think you were exploring the, the gallery scene. Uh, simultaneously. Well, the gallery thing was a total luck out. Next um, one. Up. I was doing, I did a lot of watercolor and yeah, and I was painting and I went to a show at grand central art gallery of Milt Kobayashi's work. And I was a big fan and I was a big skip Lipke fan. And, uh, I went to that show and and it blew me away. I just loved his work. And so I remember again going home and calling the operator and seeing if there was a number for Milt Kobayashi. And she connected me. And uh, we we I just started talking and stuff and told him that, you know, we'd been out painting with Jeff. He said, No way, you know. And uh, he was a big Frazetta fan. And he's like, Oh man, you gotta, you know, you gotta come. You gotta come visit. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I got all my paintings in that in that pleather thing you know and like went and uh when i got there i was like blown away again because i lucked out again because it was he and skip lipke shared a studio so i got both of those guys that day and uh so i was picking their brain you know like man you know how did you guys get into galleries and you know and all this and all that and and they were they were like, oh man, it's a real pain. You gotta like take all these slides, you gotta send them off to all the different galleries, you gotta wait for however how long and you know and uh and i was like i really can't afford to shoot a bunch of slides you know <laughs> and they said well let's you know let's see what you got you know and they went through it and they're like they should carry you know they should carry your stuff tell go to grand central and tell them we said they should carry your stuff and i was like really and they're like yeah so i went totally unannounced <laughs> and like the the secretary was like you know because i had my big portfolio and and i said yeah you know um Milt Kobayashi and Skip Lipke said I should bring my work here and talk to Bill Cox, who was the, uh, the art director there. Yep. Different one. <laughs> and, uh, so he, she goes, well, he's on a call right now, but you know, go, you know, hang out, whatever. And so I'm wandering around looking at, you know, uh, I forget who all was there. There was still Milt work and, uh, I don't remember all the, the people there, but, uh, Bill Cox came out and goes, Hey, he goes, give me 20 minutes, whatever. And then, so he came out and he finally, after his call, I took me into the, his office and took my paintings out and put them on the thing and hit him with the, those nice warm lights they would have. And he goes, yeah, yeah. 
we'll carry your work. And yeah, Bill, show the next one if you would too. And uh, there's a funny story about this one that uh, Rob Story in Dallas, I think he's in Dallas, uh, bought this off someone. I sold it years ago to someone in Canada and he found it. I don't know where, but it was in really bad shape. He bought it and had it professionally cleaned up and restretched and all this and brought it back to uh, its, its you know, glory, whatever. But yeah, so it was amazing. I was getting basically getting paid to learn how to paint, you know, um, because again, in, in school, you know, what happened was I remember my painting teacher, uh, Mr. Ted Kurahara, he was the head of the department. He said, look, he goes, all these all these other students, they absolutely don't care about what you guys want to do. They're, you know, he goes they're they don't get it. He goes, uh, cause we would put stuff up on the wall and they would laugh at us because it was figurative, you know, they would laugh at us and they were like, well, you know, man, why don't you at least hang it upside down? You know? So it's like, you know, we were, it was just, it was horrible. So he said, look, he goes, go do your thing. Every two weeks, come in, show me what you've been working on. I'll force them to sit down and, and really take it seriously. So we just cut out. You know, we would get, we would throw stuff in the back of my car and drive to the Brandywine and whatever and just go landscape painting, you know. Um, and that's so we basically, yeah, we taught each other how to paint because we weren't getting the instruction that we wanted or needed at the school. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah. Um, and then the whole gallery scene, then I got contacted by a gallery in Houston, the Jack Meyer gallery. And, uh, they had me slated for a one man show, which I was psyched. And, but I said, Hey, you know, but what about, can I bring my buddies in? Can we do a three man show? And it was Kent and Jay and let's do a, you know, do it. And they were like, okay. So we did a big, it was called the romantic show. And we had a ton of work that we did and we did a, a, a sort of a side show while we bought, while we packed up the work up in upstate New York. Uh, and so we did a sort of a sideshow. So Barry and Jeff and Bernie and all these people could come see the show before we, before we created it and sent it to Houston. And um, so, yeah. And the show was, a was, a was successful and stuff. It was great. And I stayed with that gallery for a pretty good while, but the thing was we had that opening, we had these college students came in, and they were like, you know, typical college students. They were like scruffy and beat, you know. And uh, and the the owners were like, do y'all know these people? And we're like, no. And they, but you could tell, man, they were getting up on those paintings and eyeballing them, you know. And they said, well, we'll get rid of them. We're like, no, these are the only people that are here to see the paintings. <laughs> it's like, you know. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, we went over to them. We're like, hey, you know, grab some food, guys. And, you know, <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, so. It, but the thing was, so that was, you know, the thing, it just felt really sort of distasteful in some ways because the work, you know, would, would you'd see the work at the opening and then people were buying work, some definitely because they loved it, you know, but uh, there were others, it was like, almost like, you know, check me out, I'm buying a painting, you know, whatever. And then you knew that that work wasn't going to get seen anymore. Mm -hmm. So you weren't, it was like the idea of communication wasn't the same as publishing uh the impact that you could have and the and the the communication with an audience was very different and uh and i remember just getting really sort of fed up with the gallery thing and just wanting to tell stories and so i that's when i shifted and started really working with on like enemy ace and stuff like that you know and i was and then jay was having me come up and work on moonshadow uh to meet the deadlines and um you know, had I stayed in galleries. <laughs> well, you, know. you showed me a lot of those slides, like the physical uh, three by fours and, and all the, the shots you had made. You have a stack of them, that old little box from back in uh, New York days. And, yeah. and that's just what I was lucky enough to get shot because getting a transparency cost money. A lot, mm -hmm. a, lot. a lot. But I remember thinking you were creating very, very, very pretty images they were uh you know they were evocative they elicited a lot but they were also they were very soft and ethereal and and pretty and i know you have jeff maybe a little bit on your shoulder looking at what you're painting whenever you painted right and yeah. 
but uh, it sounds like the experience with the galleries basically gave you greater focus and conviction on, to me, what you've always been, which is a storyteller. Storyteller. Yeah, we can go right into Enemy Ace now. Well, I wonder what watercolor they have. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, Major, uh, if you want to let us know which watercolor piece you picked up from that show, uh, message that's it in the great. chat. We'll show it. Yeah, that was from the Romantic show. I think that's the one that they were talking about. Yeah, wow. we're all curious, but uh, yeah, here's the enemy ace images you mentioned. Yeah, so ace it was a thing that I was messing with for man years, really, just for myself. You know, I was. So I the first work that I really got out of school uh, was I was I heard that they were going to do uh, now I can't remember the name of the publishing company, but it was Tony Despoto was going to do Creepy and Eerie again. And so, I, you know, and so I went and showed him stuff and he was like, yeah, no, you know, really no, I don't want to use you, but I had a painting I'd done at that time. I was reading a lot of stuff about Vietnam. And so I had done a, a painting about Vietnam and he says, you know, he goes, but you know, we have, you know, we have this like a sort of soldier of fortune magazine here, which you, you want to talk to that guy. And I was like, yeah, sure. And so it was uh, Jim Morris, who's a writer and was also later one of the experts on the history channel. Um, so he looked at the work and said, yeah, you know, they didn't even use art in that magazine, but he says, okay, yeah. He goes, you know, that'd be really cool. And like, he gave me work. It came out every other month, but he gave me work every month and it paid my, you know, it was, it was awesome. It paid my, my rent and everything. And it was, he gave me a painting to do and several pen and inks. And so it was a, again, a great and incredible learning experience, you know, but it also, and there was one time where he said, you know, you ought to, I was really uh, into reading about this stuff. And he said, you know, and I read his book, which was incredible, War Diary. And then he said, you know, you really ought to talk to some of these vets. And I said, yeah, I would love to. And he goes, come into the office and you can use our phones and I'll hook you up with some guys to talk to. And so I did that. And that sort of convinced me like, that I wanted to do something of my own about this because I was petrified as a kid that war went on my entire life, you know, up, up to 15 years old. And so it wasn't a stretch to think that you, you might have to go to this thing. And I remember Lum's mother always telling us, I'm going to shoot y'all in the foot so you don't have to go to this thing. And we were like, oh, my God, <laughs> so, you know, um, but I'm really, you know, was always curious, you know, about it because it was such a scary thing to me. And so I but I but I thought, you know. What could I, what could I pair this with? And I remembered reading Enemy Ace as a kid. I was a Joe Kubert maniac, you know, Tarzan, Sergeant Rock, all that stuff. I was a Kubert junkie. Cool. And uh, so I, I got all my, you know, I found some of, I had some in my collection and then I started searching for them and getting them. And uh, then I started playing with the way I would draw it or paint it or whatever and, trying to come up with a story and it was really like for several years and then uh and scott hampton you can show the be, next image bill sorry go sure. ahead go ahead yeah, scott hampton was in uh columbia south carolina and he would he would, <laughs> scott would give me a call he's like hey man what are you up to and i'm in brooklyn you know and i'm like yeah nothing really because i'm on my way click you know <laughs> and so eight hours later or whatever it was 12 i don't know he like my, my doorbell's ringing and I throw the keys down and uh, we'd go park his car and then go into the seventh Avenue donuts and, and park slope and, and just drink coffee all night and just sketch. And, you know, but he was like, he was coming up and he said, Hey, I'm going to be at Rick Bryant's studio in Midtown. Bring all that ACE stuff you've been messing with. And I'm like, okay. So I took it all there and he came in and he was like, uh, Oh man, is this all the ACE stuff? I'm like, yeah. And he picked it up and he goes, see you later. And he left. And I was like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to DC. And if you want to be there when it lands, you got to follow me. And so he just left. And I'm like, uh, you know, so I followed and got on the subway with him, scared to death. And uh, we got to DC and he, you know, took, we went straight in to go see Andy Helfer. And he says, Andy, you got to look at this. Boom. And he lays it out. And Andy was like, yeah, we want to publish this. Like that? Really? <laughs> 
Yeah. A, a painted book, a painted yeah. standalone book. And, uh, then and you said yes and, and committed the next like 12 months of your life to three years. It's three, three years. <laughs> well, and the thing was, I, I told him, I said, look, I'm not going to start doing final stuff until I get a, you know, contract. And he, they were like, okay. And so they, they didn't want me to go to Marvel, but they said, uh, you want to do covers? And I was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they, they started throwing the Batman covers and, and all this stuff at me, you know? And so, uh, it took them a year to get me a contract. And oh, okay. it was so, and Mara Healy, who, you know, again, God rest her soul. She, she passed away not too long ago. Um, she, she was one of the legal beagles up there. And she came out and she's like, uh, you know, I have the, I have the, your contract, you know, come into the office. And she took me in there and she shut the door and she goes, listen, you don't want to sign this contract. <laughs> I was like, well, she goes, I want to tell you what you're going to ask for, you know? And I was like, what? <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, you know, very nice. Yeah. yeah. And I made, you know, when I went in, I also, I made it really clear to everybody, you know, there, I was like, look, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know, and I just want the best book I can possibly do. And so any help that you can give me, I'm I'm all ears, you know. And uh in the covers that I was doing, I did the 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 color guides and then Bob uh Bob LaRose was uh in the bullpen there at DC and he was really into you know sergeant was he was into all the all the stuff and he would always he was like oh man he goes come here come here let's see it and he would take it and he would sit down and and go over it with me and correct and make you know and show me how to really do that it was all that old school you know where you had to label everything and all that yeah. according to the chart and so the you know those covers came out the color came out really nice because of bob uh double checking stuff and then later chirello uh helped me with some of those later ones you know yeah. Did did I might be making this up? Did Trippy take you up on a plane? Yeah. 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 He, he heard, heard that I was doing this thing, and he said, "Hey, I want to take you up." And he had a uh, two seater steerman. He goes, "I want you to see what it was really like," you know. And so we all went up. I, uh, Jay Muth went up. Kent and I, and it was uh, we were in the front seat. Each person there was a solo. It was two of uh, you know him and uh, one person. And it was scary, you know, it was, uh, he's doing dives and all this stuff. And, you know, you hear it in the movies that, 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 uh, you know, and that's those guy wires vibrating. It really sounds right. like that. Creepy. Okay. <clears throat> but, uh, and, I'm, and I had my 35 millimeter and I'm like shooting, you know, and I'm like dropping film. I'm like, oh, <laughs> trying to get as many shots in <laughs> as I could while we're flying. It was awesome. You know, it gave me a real good sense of how that worked, you know. That's incredible. I mean, I, I did not know uh, Trimpy was a pilot. That's, that's yeah, great. he was a pilot in Vietnam. I think Bob, he took Layton up all the time. Yeah, Bob told me the same thing. He'd go up uh, with, with, with Trimpy. I'm like, where where was his plane? Did he, did he own a plane? Like, you can't hide a plane in anywhere near New York City. It was up in the Catskills near Woodstock, you know. And, uh yeah through the mountains and it was awesome and uh and then also i was visiting the rhinebeck aerodrome and at cole palin's flying circus and i got to go and climb on top of those and sit in the cockpits of those planes you know and take pictures and stuff <clears throat> it was like and you know again yeah it really was a labor of love i was so into everything about it um so the the art took three years and then the writing um Scott Hampton helped me saw a, a good bit on the writing too. And we would sit down and I had a tape recorder and we would actually just talk stuff, dialogue and record it and, and then sift it, you know? Um, so yeah, you know, but it would never, I don't think it, it probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Scott Hampton. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. Let's not give that guy any credit. Let's move on. Um, hey, well, before we do, the uh, Major Swivet mentioned uh, the the title of the piece that he got from that show. It was uh, Cass Stevens. You own that one? Well, there Is you it the, it's the girl's back? Wow, that's cool. I thought that, you know I thought someone else had bought that, and they said they had a flood, and it they lost whatever it was. But that 
I think I know that's one of my favorite watercolors. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's fantastic. Well, congrats, uh, Major, if, you, if you're the owner of that one. So even back then, George, cats to even track names for watercolors. Oh, yeah. Well, that was, was uh, yeah, I did that painting, and that's uh, – I did the painting into white where I was trying to get my uh, blind narcissus on, you know, and, uh, and it was, it was one of those um, turning point pieces, you know, uh, that really flipped where it started to sort of make sense. And I remember being at a convention and I had that piece up, <clears throat> had never met Barry at that time. And he came up and he said, oh, yeah, he goes, you know, man, you're really, you're really, you know, going for blind narcissus. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And you know, that title is from a Cat Stevens song. I'm like, yeah, like Devil's Lake. And he goes, yeah. And we hit it off. You know? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. And yeah. later I took a print of that when I, when I graduated art school, my parents, we all went to London yeah. and I tried to, uh, they wanted to go shopping and all this kind of, I was like, I'm out of here. So I went, I had my, my oils with me and stuff and I went landscape painting and I, but I tried to hunt Cat Stevens down and I got, I think it was his brother that I ended up talking to right. and he gave me the address of his office, Cat's office. So I went there and it was the Muslim ladies and, you know, they had me take my shoes off and they showed me his office and I gave him the print. They put it on his desk, but he was in Morocco or something. So I didn't get to meet him. So, but I got close. So let, we can, uh, just for the sake of time here, we're about halfway through. We we have like a, we got like a, a bunch of, you know, you did a lot of cover work for a while there, DC and Marvel. We got a bunch of covers here. And we always uh, laugh at the, the DC fans in the chat. So there's a bunch of DC covers uh, <laughs> here for them too. But Bill, this is a good time as any, if you want to talk about George, uh, and the the uh sunday, oh that's sunday, true sunday yeah yeah that's right well hoarders hyde mentioned it earlier uh, you know which made me think about it uh where he said that uh, george thank you for your masterpiece natsuki found page one from issue one uh, for my forever collection found six pages from your weird war tales and hope to cross paths at a con for a handshake and some sigs sometime and uh, yeah. the yeah. fun thing about the weird war tales was that was at a show in uh, Paris and Belgium. Or, no, it was just Paris. And I had told those guys that I didn't want to break that story up. And they, but they did anyway. And I was like, oh. so at least they're in good hands. So six pages. Um, She's got six. Yeah. That's more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, cool. yeah. But what we were going to say was to Hoarders Hyde is, of course, uh, George, you're going to be attending OAX next January. And so Hoarders Hyde, I, I don't know what part of the country you're in, but uh, in Orlando in 2024, the weekend of the 26th through the 28th, George Pratt is one of our guests at that show. So you would have the perfect cool. opportunity for a handshake and some SIGs if you uh, were so inclined to come out. We hope you do. That'd be great. Bring a cigar. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm looking for maybe maybe James will show up too, right? He, he you know he's uh, he's in the area. We, Mr. Martin could hang out as well. If yeah. we don't invite him, maybe there's more of a chance uh, he'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, what and also you know Foster's around. John Foster. Yep. There you go. Hoarder's Hide is in Ohio. Well, you you know you always need a vacation out of Ohio in January. Hoarder's Hide. So uh, put it on your calendar. And Josh Flanders bought uh, tickets the other day too, so Josh is definitely going to be there. Um, that's uh, looking Josh forward to that. Yeah. That's oh. going to be an amazing show. Thank you. It'll be mind blowing. We're, uh, we're we're excited for, for it. I'll tell you that. And uh, but yeah, it's it's great to have you there. I mean, I, I didn't realize you were in the area, which uh, is even better. I mean, sort of in the area, right? I mean, yeah. you're teaching at Ringling, of course, which is uh, great. I was down at that campus. Uh, the summer before last, my daughter took some uh, classes there, and uh, that was her first time away from home, was doing those oh, cool. uh, pre-college courses, but uh, she loved it. So I think she's going to be trying to get into there, uh, I think, great. the year after next. Yeah, I'm excited for her to give it a try. Is she? Uh, we talked about it, but I don't remember which... Uh, she was in the illustration classes, 
uh, I think she took two illustration classes while she was there. Oh, cool. Yeah. George, they wouldn't let them leave the campus. They like built like 30 foot fences and wouldn't let these kids like off the, like, what was that about? Well, they don't, they don't allow, I think when you're there too, you can't have a car as a freshman. Oh, okay. uh, so I don't know what they do with free college. It was for a summer program thing. And I think that they were, Bill, they were restricted. From yeah, they really, yeah. Well, they went, went off once, I think, but you know, it's <laughs> heavily supervised. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but that, there were still COVID issues at that point in time too, because yeah. it was the summer oh. before last in June. So there were a few other uh, issues for them not being able to get. Oh, around, I see. But yeah, okay. it's, all, it's okay though. But yeah, John, <laughs> what's that? It's Florida. There's it is no COVID in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, so they say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's OAX is going to be great, and uh, Kazra and I are. Uh, we're on the phone every day talking about it. Lots of lots of work for that, but it's, it's well worth it. It's going to be a great show. And a lot of announcements in the next few weeks. For very sure. Very true. Yeah. So, uh, well, we got we got a bunch of covers. We, we can, I mean, there's, there's, we don't need to really you, if you see something George, you want to This I got to tell you, I hate saying this kind of stuff. I'm going to say it anyway. I felt like a little shaken like a little Howard Chaikin feel to this. Well, they, you know, the thing is, is that it was around that time, but it was, uh, my sketch had, had Stukas. I really wanted to draw Stukas and they were like, no, you got to do Migs now because of the Chaikin, whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. So. Okay. You know. And then um, Bill, you can go through it at, at any pace you like, but yeah, they, they even, they even let you do, uh, Painted yeah. cover. Yeah. Vertigo. Yeah, vertigo. Shooting uh, the reference for that last one was fun because my friend Mike Danza, uh, the my girlfriend at the time, her cousin's daughter posed with Mike. Mike had to be in his underwear and he's holding, <laughs> you know, he's like, You owe me big time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Nice. And I, I know you did many, at least three, Conan uh, painted covers yeah. as well. Yeah. Those are very nice. Doc Savage. I was, man, I was so psyched to get to do Doc because I, I was such a fan of all, well, a fan of the books, but a huge fan Same. of those Pama covers. Yeah. yeah. When that I one you in, still have. That one, that one yeah. I mean, that one's really, really nice. Good prize. It's a uh, paint. They said, you know, your work is really kind of soft. And they said, can you make something a little more rugged? So I glued burlap down and, and painted on it and made it really grungy. And, and, and it's glued to a, like a big birch board. So, mm -hmm. yeah, when I was a kid, my dad, he would ask me to go on the rounds with him to the nursing homes. And he would take me to Gibson's department store and they had this huge paperback rack. And I would, he would let me pick out a Doc Savage book and I would, you know, struggle over which one to get because of the Bama covers. And then I would stay in the car and read while he did rounds. Mm. Mm. The power of a cover. Yeah. I picked up many, uh, many books that way just because I love the cover. This is many times the stories weren't as good as the cover. Yeah. Either, but yeah, uh, I was a for a good people. cover. I still have my complete Doc Savage collection. Mm -hmm. I love those things. Awesome. And again, that was, you know, my cousin introduced me to that. Hmm. Batman's, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of Batman's. That one, uh, that one, and that one's pretty classic. I wish I hel had held on to the original art for all my Batman's. Sure, yeah, we go on vacation to Japan and uh, do yeah. another book. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. That one, this one's great. Yeah. And that was uh those things were on top of my roof in Brooklyn. So I went up and photographed them and drew them. Nice. Man, I was and I was so glad to be able to do something for Weird War Tales because I you know, I was such a fan of that book as a kid, you know. So that was a a uh you know, a, a checklist thing. 
Yeah, and, and Zelzel was in that book. Didn't notice that before. Yeah, Zelzel. Man, I love his work. He's, I think he's one of the one of the best storytellers out there. I love his. his How do you pronounce it, George? Zelzel. Zelzel. Okay. He's in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Yeah. This was done for Chris Williams' uh, Kickstarter project. It's the the only Nazi zombie, only zombie I've done, except for sketches leading up to that. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think you only need to do one. That, that's a killer image. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, that's the paperback cover for that. Mm -hmm. And we got uh, Nancy Ogami to do the logo. She, she did the Dracula logo for the Coppola film and stuff. That's that's an odd one. There's a I think there's an interior page next too. If I rem if I have my list right, there's the that cover on the left. Yeah, that's yeah. isn't that a little bit more recent? That's a European, right? Print. Spanish or something. And that was the original back cover to the hardcover. Yeah. I put the image on the right just because I used to own it and it, and it makes me sad. Um, Are you still on that one? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I love sorry. that. Yeah. Um, and then we got um, uh, Wolverine, that's UK. I forget, is it Brent Ash owns that? He does, yeah. And it's on a full sheet of Strathmore. It's a large piece. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. Oh, so it's it's larger than the number three cover I have is is sort of tall and a little bit thinner. It's a very odd shape. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty, it's pretty thin paper. The one yours is on, and his is five hundred series. You know, series plate Bristol. I think it was like three or four or five ply. I I I chose this in the three cover f because of Brent. Yeah. Well, wink, wink, wink. In case he he's watching. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful cover anyway. It's, Thank you. It's, I, mean, I did that on. logo too. I uh, I did a bunch of uh, Sumi brush letters. You know, here's like 50 N's. Here's 50 E's. You know, and I, then I took my favorite ones and collaged it together in Photoshop to make the logo. And this is when we met because uh, I went to San Diego Comic-Con and I'm going to say 2003. I don't think it was 2002. And you won the Eisner Award for this book, uh, Best Painted Book. It was 2003, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The Eisner's right on your uh, shelf, right behind you that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's 2003. And I went to Eater's Booth, and I bought my first two uh, pieces of uh, comic art. They were from uh, Wolverine uh, Netsuke. Oh, wow. Yeah, and came over and said hi to you, and then we just started listening to blues music on the iPod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I met your brother that day, too. Yeah, I th yeah, 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 he was right next to me, yeah. He didn't say a word. We just were <laughs> jibber, 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 jibber. Yep. And the fun uh, thing about that series, too, was uh, Chris uh, Claremont, he, he lived in my neighborhood in Park Slope, and we bumped into each other on the street, and he said, you know, guess what? He's like, I'm now the editor of all the editors at Marvel. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, awesome. And, and uh, he says, you know, what are you up to? And at that point, I was working on Batman. And I was not not happy with the way things were going. Uh, and, and I sort of vomited all this angst and stuff. And he goes, well, why don't you come work for Marvel? And I was like, you know, I was a DC guy. I read a lot of Marvel books, but I was a DC guy. They had Batman, they had Sergeant Rock, they had Swamp Thing, you know. But uh, I said, well, and I knew that he was really protective of Wolverine. And I said, well, you know, could I do Wolverine? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, and uh, he goes, if you come over there, he goes, we will leave you totally alone. You know, you can do, you do your thing. And I'm like, really? He goes, you know, yeah. So I said, well, yeah, I think that was like a Friday or something. And I'd been reading all this Japanese stuff, uh, like Lafcadio Hearn, ghost stories of Japan and stuff like that. And so I, so I said, well, that, you know, can I come in on Monday? He said, sure. So I, I, I stayed up and wrote this pitch about, you know, ghost story. Well, 
it was going to be a ghost story, but then I went to the comic shop that was below me and I was telling them, I, you know, I was thinking about doing this thing and I, you know, it was going to be with Mariko and they were like, well, Mariko's dead. I'm like, what? <laughs> so they said, oh yeah. You know, they told me the whole thing. And so I was like, that's perfect because she's going to be the ghost, you know? And I, and so, yeah. yeah. So it actually worked. And so I went in and Chris was like, yeah, look, you know, I said, well, I got another two years on Batman, but you know, and so, uh, at the, then by this time I moved to North Carolina and, um, uh, had gotten married and, you know, was working on Batman. We had a son, George, and he became the devil child in my Batman book. <laughs> this nice. little baby with a devil's tail. But, um, so I was finishing up Batman and then he, and then, uh, Chris called and he goes, Oh, you know, I got bad news. Uh, he had been, he had, he had left Marvel or something. And he goes, well, but you're in good hands. He goes, I passed it on to Joe Casada, and he's, he's, you're good. I'm like, okay. And so then I got a call from Joe and he said, Hey, cause I want to throw something at you. He goes, would you be up for doing the origin of Wolverine? And I was like, man, you know, yeah. He goes, it, he goes, uh, I think it was, he said, you know, Paul Jenkins is going to write it. And Paul was my editor on my my uh, No Man's Land sketchbook, and we man, he's just such a great guy, and who wrote my Weird War Tales piece, and uh, I said okay. He goes, well, it hasn't been written yet. He goes, and Frank Miller is, is possibly interested in doing it, and I said okay. Well, can I have Frank's number? And he's like, yeah. And I and I had met Frank on when I went on press for Enemy Ace. Cause he came on press after me for Electra for the graffiti book. And so I helped him proof uh, several signatures of that a little bit. And uh, so I called Frank and he said, yeah, he goes, well, I'm not interested in this at all. Like if you want it, you got it. And I was like, score, you know? So I called Joe back. I said, yeah, I'm really interested. And, uh, but at this time I finished Batman. I needed to get started, you know, on my book. And he said, no, he goes, you have to pick one or the other one. I said, well, why can't I just start mine? And then when it's ready, do that and then pick mine back up. He goes, you can't do that. He goes, and I was like, well, I, you know, I got to have work right now. And so that's, I did my book. So, but, uh, you know, was it Adam Kubert did it, did a great job. So All right. <laughs> he's there in Florida too. Yeah. He'll be at OAX. I see. Well, yeah. Your yeah, this, and this also was the right at the time that I was doing this cover was when um, I started at the Illustration Academy uh, mm -hmm. in with in Virginia with John English and uh, Mark English and Gary Kelly and all those guys. <clears throat> yes, yeah, there's yeah. a. I think there's an interior page next too. Yes, there is. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh, yeah. And Scott, again, Hampton, I was looking for an Asian Wolverine. And he goes, I have the perfect guy for this. He's the barista at this place we go to. <laughs> so I went and the, and the guy was perfect. And he says, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'll do that. You know, so that was Scott saves the day again. And Mariko was a girl. Uh, my wife and I then were at Wendy's getting lunch and George was still a baby and uh this girl came in covered in paint wearing this baseball cap and both of us were like oh my god that's Mariko and uh so I ran outside and had my you know stuff written on a thing about my my web address and all this and it was like hey you know and so she goes well let me think about it and she called she looked at everything I guess online and was like yeah I really want to do this and uh so she became Mariko yeah, she was perfect. This she guy, was actually, her. she was actually Chinese, but she goes, you know, my parents say I look Japanese. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever that means. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, just a couple more, uh, Bill, for the for this uh, sort of quick, quick romp through. This one's more recent. Yeah, yeah Michael Guidos asked me to do this for that uh, as a variant cover for Pearl. Yeah, I love this. And this I worked one of my with, favorites. Uh, Shelly Bond hired me to do this. And it was like a great 
working experience with her on that. I love that one. I love that cover. And that started as a demo at the Academy that year up in Kansas City. And now we've got some just some watercolors. We hadn't really shown any. I think we just got, uh, yeah, five or six mm -hmm. watercolors. Because I mean, you have no idea, guys, what it's like when we go down to George's. It is image overload. Just the number of of, of watercolor plates and books and portfolios. <laughs> on, it's just, it's like you get crushed under the weight of it. Is, uh, that's lovely. Yeah, it really is. You know, I did a lot of watercolor as a kid because I thought if I learned watercolor, then I'll be able to oil paint. And it doesn't work that way. <laughs> and it's totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, because they say that watercolor is supposed to be the most difficult, but I was too stupid to know that. That's Jack, Jack from the Blues yeah. book. And the last, this is my favorite one. This is up on the wall at your house. It might be gone one time. Yeah, I love that one. Emma. Did you throw that into the Frazetta show? Yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. That's, I, that's a betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> betrayal. So uh, we can move on. I know, uh, you know, there's there there's so much to cover from your career. We'd need probably like three or four two hour sessions. <laughs> uh, it's insane. The most important thing is is that you know you, you've been working for a while and we've been working together to put some books together because yeah. I don't not a lot of your work has seen the light of day for the, the last decade other than some covers and there's some video game stuff. Oddly enough, and some long form interviews. I know the, the that that Jeff Jones, Jeff and Catherine Jones Spectrum Mag uh, one, that's phenomenal. But as far as your work goes, and um, so I we included some images from two projects we're working on, George. The first one's a devil's rope and other tales, which I'll just describe really quickly, and then you take over. This is a mock-up of a cover. We actually got a bunch more. But uh, it's a total sort of deep dive, deep cut into George's works, early works, school, uh, early heavy metal, uh, 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 stuff that was rarely seen through different magazines and covers and heavy metal and so on and so forth. And then I know that I think Chiarello, if you uh, was the editor of uh, Solo, which was a really cool series, and you were given a solo book, but they they stopped the series, I think, issue 12 or so. And, and all of that solo work that was going to go into your issue is going to go into this um, uh, as well. But like 200 plus pages of story, uh, sequential storytelling, comics, deep dive, so on uh, with your all career. Work and, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, it's, uh, yeah, and it's, you know, and we were going to do a, uh, uh, an homage to my, my best friend, Lum who was, you know, the yin and, you know, the, the, not yin and yang, but the, the, the brother from another mother uh, throughout all my comic loving up, you know, as a kid and into, I mean, up until COVID, you know. Um, uh, yeah, all, you know, whenever I did stuff like going to Kaluta's and <clears throat> meeting Jeff, all that, it was always too, you know, immediately on the phone with Lum, like, Oh my God, you know? Um, so yeah. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's stuff from high school and all that action lad <laughs> and fantastic man and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then all the, you know, hopefully as much as we can get rights to publishing all the old sequential work, short, short, uh, sequential stories. Yeah. Thanks to Michael Lovitz, uh, who's looking into that uh, yeah. for us as well. But we, it started out as maybe 150 to 200. It went past 300 real quick. I mean, there's a lot of work. George <laughs> has written a, a, a phenomenal intro to it. There's a, it's a chronological flow. Um, Bill Sienkiewicz yeah. 
kind enough yeah. to write something for it. And uh, I think we'll kickstart it sometime. Um, that'll be our second book. And, the, you know, people support it. Uh, the page count, Bill, you can go to the next image. Sure. There's a, I think it's entropy. It's uh, it is early. Entropy, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, it'll just get, it'll just keep getting bigger because, you know, it's all, it's all laid out. It's all done, compiled. It's being, it's being massaged by uh, my ex, uh, who's an incredible graphic designer. Yeah. For example, I mean, this whole story is in there. Yeah. Yeah. This was going to be a uh, panel album. You know, and I was going to get to use the logo and everything, but. Right. And yet, you, know, you did this for Little Nemo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about making making some large prints of this for sale. I don't know. And it's uh, like an homage to my dad. And my dog had just died. Scout became Scout Isle. <clears throat> That's beautiful. Now the Peter Peter's got a question about World War One. The second part, Morocco, is the next one. Uh, but but uh, I'll do a shout out on this. You know, the background of this is uh, <clears throat> that's what what you've seen ghosted through is all uh, Jeff Stackhouse okay. uh, had uh, given me a original printed Little Nemo for my birthday one year in Brooklyn. And so I, I pulled it out of the frame and scanned it, the back okay. of it, high res, and ghosted it through like it was a real little Nemo. You know? Very cool. I was wondering about that, so I'm glad you. <laughs> yeah, it, it looked like a like a little Nemo print, but uh, yeah. something wasn't quite right. Yeah. So we'll do Morocco next, but Peter, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The. Um, I'm reading the, the the feed here. The fascination with World War One was an offshoot, really, of the Vietnam stuff. But I, my granddad was a was in World War One, was a doughboy, didn't see any action or anything. But <clears throat> World War One sort of followed me as a kid. It was really into the the first piece I learned on piano was the caissons go rolling along and. And I, uh, I remember trips to Colorado as a kid and, and there was like this, this sort of red Baron game that I would play and, um, and building those models and stuff as a kid at all. And then my, my English teacher had told me that she was the, the model for Howard Chandler, uh, not Chandler Christie, uh, Montgomery flags. I wish I were a man, the Navy poster. And uh, so this this weird World War One current was always sort of floating around. It was kind of weird. But um, and then the, one of my uh, the first artists I ever met was uh, Phyllis Lee, great painter in Beaumont, my hometown. And she was always convinced that I had died in the trenches or something like that and was reincarnated. Well, I told you to do regression therapy to find out whether you were Harvey Dunn. Could you bring up the Harvey <laughs> Dunn image? We forgot to bring that that up. Oh, I always right. wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to be there when that happened. <laughs> George, this is this is George's guy right here. And yeah, I'm a Dunn junkie. I uh, was lucky and started uh, filming a documentary with Stephen Budlong about Harvey Dunn and the and the eight artists that went to the front in the First World War. And uh, we got a lot in the can. And Steve had passed away, and just when we had decided to really try to finish it. And uh, we were we were casting about to try and get funding, <clears throat> and um, so yeah, we went to the Smithsonian and into the bowels of the Smithsonian. They pulled everything out. I got to hold the box that he had used in the trenches, and they had all the rolls. We filmed all that. I mean, we we got and then and then shot at the uh, South Dakota Museum of a show of all that work because they were they were restoring it when I was at the, we were at the Smithsonian and we filmed them working on it and stuff and then went to the actual show and filmed there. Uh, and I interviewed two non combat artists there and, uh, and the guy who wrote the original book on Dunn, uh, Karolovich. And, uh, this is before Walt Reed's book came out. And uh, we interviewed, I interviewed Walt Reed at 
illustration house about Harvey Dunn. And he had uh, Richard Kelly from the Kelly collection sent over two large Dunn oils and a Cornwell oil for us to have behind Walt when I interviewed him. And then Walt had some of the sketchbooks from the family that I could, we could film looking through also that he carried with him uh, through the, through the trenches and through the, the back, you know, the front and stuff. Um, so yeah, Dunn is like his, he was the main touchstone for me of, of world war one art. Uh, I had seen so much of it in, in history books, but always in black and white, these little horrible little things, you know, uh, and Steve interviewed uh, Cornabis, who wrote The Art of the Trenches, um, which I've never seen any of that material. It's, it's in the can somewhere. I think uh, Steve's son has all of it there. Um, so, yeah, someday it would be cool to finish that. But, George, in, in, the, in the glass display cases at your house, you have Pratt family members that have served uh, going back – a hundred years? I mean, well, my granddad, he served my, my dad was in world war two in the right. Navy. Didn't right. see any action. You know, all my friends when, when we were kids, you know, you figure that was what 15, 20 years after world war two. Mm -hmm. And so all the parents, you know, they were, they were either fighter pilots or grunts or, you know, Navy or whatever. And so we had all that gear. We used to dress up in all that gear and play guns and stuff, you know, as kids. Um, so I was, I, yeah, I was totally infatuated. You know, growing up in Texas, you know, the Audie Murphy, you know, was one of your big heroes. And, and of course, all the, you know, the, the what were the, I can't think of now, I'm drawing a blank, you know, Rat Patrol and uh, uh, what was that one? Something's. God, I can't think of it now, but a lot of these series were war related and stuff. So I was really, and my dad had books around that he was reading about World War II a lot. So I was constantly picking up these big fat tomes of, uh, you know, um, The Rising Sun and uh, by uh, now, of course, I'm drawing a blank, of course, on the names, but great Martin Caden and, you know, uh, all these writers. And I was, you know, reading this stuff and, and just it, uh, infatuated with the pictures, fascinated. And uh, Jablonski's Air War book, when we were kids, that was always checked out. We, we would sit and, like, just pour over those pages and stuff. So, yeah. Do you, do you want to show the Wyatt in the pile? Do you want to? Um, quickly, and then I can talk about Morocco. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because the Wyatt pile, yeah, there's NC. This stuff was huge to us in art school. Ken and I were, this, man, this was killing us. And, and we, you know, I, I drove my car up for my last year at Pratt, and I stopped at the Brandywine and just was blown away, you know, seeing the originals. And then I, I got Kent to go, and we, like, <laughs> We threw all our stuff. We got there late at night. It was cold. It was in November or something. Got there late at night. And we threw all the stuff in the front seats, flipped the seats down. We had two sleeping bags that we zipped up into one giant bag. And we got in the back uh, uh, in the in the uh, hatchback and, like, drank a bunch of NyQuil and, like, slept in the back of the car, you know, in the in the parking lot. And then, uh, and we had beer that we put in the river and we were, you know, running around, oh my God, look at all that, you know. And then in the morning we went to the uh, museum <clears throat> and then would go out and paint and come back in, look at the paintings, go back out and paint. It was awesome. But Pyle was, you know, and these guys were the gods, you know. Look at that, yeah. And I just got back from that trip with James and, and Michael Marsicano, James Martin. And uh, seeing all these originals again and taking new photographs and stuff. It's just, ugh, man. That's gorgeous. Yeah, George, when you come up to Orlando, you can go to uh, the, uh, the the hotel here. It's got yeah. a really beautiful collection, yeah. Yeah, Grand Bohemian has... Uh, Grand Bohemian, yeah. The fifth floor has a whole pile of Cornwell, like primetime Cornwells, yeah. They're just up on the wall. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a nice corn. Well, yeah. Yeah, wait, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah from see. from Kazra. Amazing. Can't quite see it, but uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it's nice. a fake, George. It's a it's fake. a fake. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear that. <laughs> Kazra painted it. <laughs> so the uh, yeah the Morocco trip was my first sabbatical, and you know I started teaching in like early ninety. 92, 93 at Pratt. And so this is the first sabbatical I ever took. And I'd always wanted to go to Morocco because in art school, I saw those John Singer Sargent paintings of the watercolors of the Bedouins. And I was just like, oh my God, I got to, you know, I, I want to do this. And I, it was always top of the list and I had never done it. And finally I said, you know, I'm going to go. And uh, I went for two months and, uh, John Foster came and, and and was there for the first three weeks, and we just, you know, we we started in Marrakesh, and then went to um, Sawara on the coast, and then we went to the Emlil to the Atlas Mountains, and then to Fez, in the Blue City, and then back to Fez, and then John left, and then I stayed in Fez for a long time, and and hooked up with this Be uh, Berber family uh, in their, it was in their shop in, in the, and I was all, we were always in the old city, you know, in the walled cities, the old medieval stuff and uh, went into their shop and this uh, Idris uh, was showing me the you know, beautiful stuff they had like jewelry and stuff. And he was explaining the different tribes and all this. And he said, you know, what, what will you do now? And uh, I said, well, I, you know, I really want to go see the Sahara. He's like, Oh my God, it's beautiful. Uh, you know, my, my oldest daughter's never seen it. And blah, blah, and I was like, man, he goes, and he got this gleam. He's like, let's do it. I was like, what? He goes, let's do it. And I said, uh, he goes, I know a driver. And I was like, okay. You know, <laughs> so he's like, tomorrow you will come and we, you will have lunch at my house. You'll meet my wife and children and I will have the driver there and we can, we can talk. And so I was like, okay, you know, so had lunch uh, and then everything is, is bargaining. You know, you've got a bargain. And finally, I was just like, look, this is what I'm willing to pay, you know. And he said, okay, the driver who couldn't speak English was like, okay. And I said, and he says, well, they need, uh, he needs like, I think it was like half the money up front. And I'm like, oh man, I hope I'm not getting, you know, screwed here. And so, but I was like, all right, in for a penny, you know, so I paid and he said, we're going to meet on this day outside the wall and you know, it's a long drive. And uh, you know, so when I go out there, I left all my stuff in the Riyadh and I went out and had my, my paints and I told him, I said, look, if I do this, I want to be able to stop and set up and paint or draw. And he goes, absolutely. And so I, I got out there, no one was there. And I'm like, Oh no, but they had given me the card to the driver. And so I called it and Idris answered. He goes, no, 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 we're just pulling up. And, we got coffee and hit the road. It's a 13 hour drive back to the, to the desert. And, uh, it was awesome. It was amazing. And we stayed at the, the Ganawa bivouac Ganawa, uh, the, the, these, uh, traditional ancient African musicians and slept in tents, you know, and they played at night and, uh, and, uh, ran a giant fire and served, served, uh, Tajin and, all this, it was like incredible, you know, uh, went out to the, see the Bedouins, um, met the holy man, which is that first photo, uh, was outside the Sahara. Um, and I would just wander to this wander the, the alleys of Fez, you know, it was just mind blowing. And, and John and I had gone through and on the train ride to Fez, we had met the guy who, who owned one of the tanneries, there and he said, Oh, you've got to come and like, you know, come draw. And we were like, Okay. So we went and it was, you know, man, those the place it smelled so bad because they use pigeon shit, you know, and stuff to do to, to do this. And so we were, but they so you would put mint leaves under your nose, and we we're sitting there, you know, and they serve mint tea everywhere. And uh, we drew John knocked it out of the park. His sketches for that are really cool. Um in, in fact, I'm I'm scanning his books right now. Oh well, that worked <laughs> out. Good. He did bring them over. So that's great. Um, 
Yeah. So it was just this amazing trip. And so when we got back from the desert, you know, Idris said, you must, you must move out of the Riyadh and come live with us. And I was like, okay. You know, so, so, but they gave me their bedroom, which I was really, I said, oh no, 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 no. You must, you must have your own room that you can close the door. And, uh, and I was like, didn't feel good about it, but I did it. And they were sleeping on, you know, uh, mats outside. In the, they knew you snored, George. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, it was awesome. I mean, and he, he, you know, he was really trying to uh, give me insight into uh, Islam. You know, he wasn't trying to convert me at all, but he was like, this is, this is what, what we do, you know, and, and um, took me into the, the baths and stuff. And, you know, behind where they, she took me back where they, you could see where they were actually heating the water for the, which is great. Cause you're like, it was like something out of, you know, Lord of the Rings and this fire and, you know, and uh, it was really amazing. You know, it was an amazing journey. And then I ended up, uh, Going back to the blue city, which is like this, it really is blue. It's mind blowing. My favorite was one of my favorite places and John's and um, oh, the, the photos are stunning. It, right. it really is an amazing place. And everybody, honestly, you know, everybody was super nice. It was such a, I never felt, you know, well, I, did I feel out of place? Yeah. Like, you know, I wasn't from Morocco, but uh, everybody was super nice and, and welcoming and it was it was pretty you cool. had that you had a big birthy uh yeah. beard while you were there you fit in great and there's some watercolors from uh, yeah, did you do was, the, did you do this when you got back or while you were no, there I'm there and it's uh yeah i was alibaba they kept calling me alibaba <laughs> right and uh and at them first you know we john thought they were calling him that too and we, he was like i'm not alibaba you're all you know and uh but then it turned it's a it's a it's a term of endearment actually and the yeah. when i was living with the with uh, idris and his wife she and we're still friends on uh what's happened and, and she she couldn't really speak english but she was like baba it said i looked like her dad and stuff you know so and he and it was one time it was my daughter's birthday and the the phone rang and it was Idris. And, and I said, oh, it's my daughter. He goes, oh, my God. And he got on the drums and he played uh, Aznaz, uh, one of the uh, Muhammad Ruishi songs for her. He sang it to her. You know, it was awesome. Beautiful. So oil paintings. And yeah, uh, the oils, yeah. for the most part, were done after the fact here in Florida. And uh, but I did do like several small oils while I was there. It was just a real pain to set up uh, out there in the in the uh, thing. I, I did a painting. I started painting the Casbah in this big door, and then a blue door, and then a couple of the landscapes. Um, two, two moleskin sketchbooks you you used, yeah? yeah, yeah. And we were going through we were going through the photos. Just tell everybody how many photos I shot you started about with. What now? Oh yeah. Uh, well, I started with, I shot over twenty six thousand photos. See, uh, this is what it's like working with George Bill. There were twenty. <laughs> this is the first time I ever. I just walked away from him. I'm like, I'm not freaking going through twenty six thousand. So we're putting a book together, Carnet de Voyage Morocco, with with George with John Foster. This is the first book that we want to put out, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about. You know, this is actually kind of the format right here. It's like floppy book, 350 pages tops, right? How many photos can you put in a 300-page book that's about Morocco, that's about art and writing, right? Maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe you can shove in 50. 26,000 Yeah, I, would, I, I don't know how you even do that. Thousand. And, and <laughs> I, I walked away until George gave me a number that was like, and we, we started with a thousand and it was impossible. It's impossible to get rid of one. And do and you remember, George? Yeah. Like I, I had to go outside and like smoke a pack of cigarettes afterwards. <laughs> to get it, we got it down from a thousand to like 382 or. No, so you did it. That's the thing. You were yeah. actually able to sit through it and distill it down to 382 photographs. I mean, that's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, this is just the photographs for a book about his 
art and drawings mm -hmm. with a lot of okay. Yeah. But these, it's, these yeah, are labors of love, these books. That's a total experience. But and I still want to maybe uh hit up Bill Stout to write the intro. He, I showed him the sketchbooks at a con in Tampa. And he was like, oh, man, because you have to publish this stuff. So I'm hoping maybe he'll agree to do that. You could do a 400-page photo book. They're stunning. I mean, you saw the original photos. The the amount of character in people's faces, the textures, the colors, and contrast, the environments, it's, it's just amazing. There were at least 50 photographs that George took that could have been just tweaked a little bit digitally, and it would look like a beautiful George Pratt painting. I mean, the way that they were framed and the contents. I picked this just because of the shapes. Look at the, the shapes. George, the shapes in this one are, are really are, are awesome. I and, started a, a new oil the other night of uh, from from the Blue City, but it's I'm doing it in black and white of the guy entering the uh, Hey, Fernando, how's it going, man? Uh, for uh, the guy, it was in the, it was in the Blue City, but the, the guy walking into one of those stores, but it was, you know, uh, Fernando, yeah, was one book for the photos, one book for George's art, one book for George's writing, one book for John <laughs> Foster's art, and uh, another book just for all the miscellaneous stuff that I'd like to shove in there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, here's a uh, here's yeah, check it out. Like, let me find it. This is uh, Foster's sketchbook. Let's see. Oh, that's great. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. But I've had to badger him to actually put these in the book. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten to see those yet. Those are tough. I'm I'm just glad they're in your possession for your scan. This is a this is a right behind you. That's over yeah, there. Foster painting. Yeah. From that's one of his Morocco pieces done after the fact here in the here in the studio and and Sorry. and i think it's okay to talk about this the uh, uh ringling is you know looking into and you're in discussions ringling about having a public display of the works uh of many of which of september. course in the book september yeah, yeah. and it'll ready be ready to drive down again uh bill i am i know the way oh. now <laughs> man they're really they're they're really serious about backing it and putting you know putting a lot of money and work into it which is cool and it's part of the the deal i made in order to get the sabbatical that the the capper is to have a show of the work mm -hmm. so it's been and that was in 2016 so <laughs> right where we talked about oh, how many years you have to wait to do another sabbatical isn't it coming seven. up seven so we can go to japan soon yeah forget foster i'll come with you this time <laughs> But will you take your own sketchbook, Kazra? Yeah, yeah, I'll take a, I'll, I'll take a sketchbook and an SLR, and and uh, I'll, I'll play the part. I'll, I'll come back with three percent non junky stuff. <laughs> three percent's my goal. Well, if you shoot yeah. uh, twenty six thousand photos while you're there, you no. probably that three percent's possible. Think, I'm, Bill, I'm Bill, think about this. I'm going to yeah. drop you in the middle of Morocco, right? And you got to figure out how to deal just with the data for 26,000 photos. You know what this guy was doing late at night, like a little weird little cockroach or something, like doing little things with uh, with memory sticks and <laughs> transfer data transfers and no Wi-Fi, just dealing with the data on 26,000 yeah. images. I bought, I bought things that would allow me to connect to the phone and dump them. And you know, but I bet I was also redundant. I was backing it up twelve ways mm -hmm. to Sunday. But you know, I'm the I'm the uh, the monkey in a room with a typewriter with a camera. You know, it's like I figure if I shoot enough, you have got some good shots. You know, you're the right kind of crazy, George. I love you. <laughs> so you used to, I mean, you, you talked about reference photo reference a lot early on as well with uh, Natsuki and everything. So that's that's a big part of your process. You know, I think you know artists draw their uh, references from a lot of different mediums. But you like being able to take the photographs yourself yeah. and uh, choose your yeah. subjects. 
Yeah, it's interesting because like we have a tough time getting our Ringling students to to embrace that and shoot mm-hmm. reference. And when I was in school, you know, well, Kent was is a very good photographer. I think he won as a kid. He won like the Kodak 500 award and stuff like that. And he's I never took a photo course. I got all my info from hanging around Kent and the. Um, so we we knew for whatever reason, we didn't have books that told us they shot reference, but we just it they just was it just made sense you mm-hmm. know so we sure. shot a lot of reference and worked from it and um yeah and so photo photography was i come from a my granddad was a a photographer his father was a professional photographer portrait photographer and uh, pratt studios in uh uh waxahachie texas before that in uh, paris texas before the fire and then so my granddad was a movie nut. He shot 16 millimeter in the 1910 all the way up, you know, wow. so we got crazy footage. And then, so, uh, and my cousin Jay and his dad were our profession were, well, uncle Howard was professional photographer. My cousin Jay was, is a professional photographer. And so, um, it was always a utilitarian thing for me shooting reference. And then, um, uh, then I took my blues trip and that was when it made, when I made the shift to seeing it. And I always saw, I mean, I knew it was an art form because I was such a fan of so many of these great photographers. Uh, you know, mostly photojournalists were the ones that were killing me, you know, like look and life and uh, all those guys. And so, but it was utilitarian until I got to the blues stuff. And then I was like, seeing it more as an actual expressive voice. Uh, and then it really culminated when I went through my divorce uh, and was like photographing my children a lot and really wanting to hang on to that. And, uh, and then later too, with the illustration Academy and being around like, Oh, you know, first I was just grabbing shots and I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm hanging out, hanging out with Mark English and Gary Kelly and Chris Payne and, you know, all these people. And I'm like, I've got to start here's this is an opportunity to really capture some history here, you know? So it, it, it became a, a another vehicle for expression. You know? mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I think the, yeah, the younger generation has uh, the, the, they should embrace reference a little bit more. I think, I mean, my kids all want to draw, but they, uh, hopefully they're not listening, but uh, yeah, they don't, they don't tend to like to use reference, but uh, uh, it is, uh, it is, it is what it is today. Uh, well, it's still that there's still that argument, you know, uh, that, you know, you shouldn't use it. It's like whatever. And it's like, you know, uh, they've always used it, you know, Degas was using it, Delacroix. I mean, you go down the line, they all used it. And it's like the idea that it's not, I mean, it's just sort of ridiculous, you know, at this point. It's mm-hmm. I don't see people driving around in horse and buggies anymore, except, you know, it's like, come on, you know. So anyway. <laughs> well, this uh you know, I look at all the rest of the images from the uh, art collection. But we're gonna have to do that on another another show, I think, because that I think we could talk for a few hours on uh, <laughs> the pieces that in your that are in your collection and the and whom you chose to collect and why, but uh, I, I'm definitely looking forward to to talking about that. Um, you know, Kaiser, we never mentioned that uh, that uh, the comic thing we talked about before the show oh, started. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that on the we'll next do one, the right? Next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have better stuff too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. My yeah, dog's been sleeping that. at my feet, and she's uh... <laughs> Ella. Ella only whined a few times, George. Yeah. And Dixie only uh, barked a few times. She's been at my feet the whole time. I haven't been able to move, and my I'm just I'm gonna break out. I think yeah. we went swimming today, and you know Ella like freaking. She loves swimming, and so she's worn out. She's pretty <laughs> beat. Oh, she's good. Pretty good tonight, yeah. She's still on a diet. Is she looking good? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. She's getting svelte. It's oh, like good. Kelly said. She's oh, she's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time I was there, she looked further off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, I don't have a dog, unfortunately. But uh, so when when's the Kickstarter you were mentioning, Kazra? Just so uh, we can kind of put that kind of on a on a calendar and think about when we might be talking about that. Well, the, we we moved from the Devil's Rope uh, anthology collection to doing the Morocco one first, and mm -hmm. we were early a couple of months ago. We were kind of like way in on it uh, to try to get it done prior to the Ringling show, but the turnaround times for printing and doing all that was impossible. So we kind of exhaled a little bit. I think to be fair, George, the last uh, month or two, but let's just say by end of summer, like. Within a handful of months, we mm -hmm. want to we want to get the first book out yeah. because we we've got we've got the Devil's Rope uh, 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 sequential art comic book deep dive anthology, and then we're working on an art book series with George. You know, like starting with the uh, like you know like pen and ink and drawing skills and moving to watercolors and then you know like pastels and oils and like a and that'll be that'll it'll be a, a a long-term series with instructional component, historical, biographical, what it was like in 78, 82, 84, New York, art, illustration, changing the business, along with technique, along with a ton of art and photography. But then we've got, I mean, George and I went to Auschwitz together. And how many photos did you shoot there, George? Oh, and we didn't God. just go to Auschwitz. We were all over. We went in Germany, remember? And, oh, and yeah. Exactly. And we mm -hmm. had a private tour Great of Auschwitz. Yeah. We have a Holocaust book that we're working on. And then the stuff that George has done for the blues, um, the See You in Hell Blind Boy uh, book. So the first domino, <laughs> we're kind of afraid of the first domino. I mean, because, do, 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 and a tremendous amount of work, certainly uh, George, not just creating it, but, but, but getting it to the point where I don't roll my eyes and go kill myself and not want to interact with it because it's George has lived an artist's life and is slightly crushed by the weight of an enormous amount of, of produced materials. And it's not just uh, uh, one medium. He's a phenomenal writer. I've read it. I love it. And a lot of it hasn't seen print. And I think I would love I would love for uh, one or two George Pratt books to come out every year for the next five to seven years, something close to that. Yeah. That's exciting. A lot of work, but uh, I think it's, yeah. it sounds like it'd be well worth it. I'd love to see it. Well, it's, it, it'll be uh, thanks to Kazra. I mean, because, uh, you know, I've, yeah, the work has all just been sitting here. Uh, originally, DC was going to do the blues book. And then, but then they wanted to, you know, they want to own everything mm -hmm. and yeah. copy everything. And I was like, yeah, no, forget it. And uh, so, uh, yeah, in the, the Holocaust book with uh, Gabor Barabas's writings um, yeah. and all that. And it's just been, and that stuff is mostly from the 90s. Um, monotypes, etchings, wood, you know, mon uh, lino cuts, oils. I mean, so, yeah. There's a lot of stuff, and uh, and then I've been part of some projects too that have was were amazing projects, but never were never published. The the Black Light project about the uh, <clears throat> genocide in Africa, and with Daniel Zezelge and uh, I got the names now. Stefan Nick Klein. Nick Klein was part of that, right? Huh. Was Nick Klein part of that? Nick Klein, Stefano Ricci. Right. Uh, I was the American. Uh, Daniel, well, Daniel Hill was the Croatian. He was Croatian. There were French, uh, uh, German, Belgian. You know, it was a, this this whole. Oh, and uh, uh, Benjamin Flau, awesome. Uh, and everybody was doing just amazing work, and they couldn't find a publisher for it. Uh, and they, we even had the, they flew the priest in from Liberia who witnessed all this stuff. And every day he would tell it, he would, you know, bear witness. And, and we were all just kind of cranking and, uh, we did, you know, uh, it was at, it was in, uh, God, now I can't remember where we were in Germany, <clears throat> but we had a big press junket kind of thing and all that, but it never, they, they've not been able to 
get a publisher and they and it did win some humanitarian awards is my my understanding but the work never came out you know mm -hmm. um so i'd love for that to actually see fruition also yeah well we start with morocco and we, we do it we do it soon we're working with uh we're talking to uh to a, a, a sort of a European partner for uh, uh, printing and distribution. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, it's exciting. So uh, we, we should have you on sometime in the summer. It's not, it seems like see if we can get you back on yeah. maybe, maybe in August and uh, and talk about your uh, art collection I, I mean i'm okay yeah <laughs> but i i've got you know a few months now to look at the uh, the images myself but yeah that's fan it's 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 spectacular but this was fun george it really was i uh yeah, I appreciate you know, it. Thank you. i've been i've admired your work for a long time and i was excited to try Cosra. i didn't have to really do anything today i i just got to press next on the slide <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have to, i didn't have to do much either and, and when we do the uh when we do the art collection stuff it'll be a little bit uh it'll be both of us just yelling at him or you yelling at him because right <laughs> again again i'm going to say this again this those pieces were selected after about two hours of going through george's art collection itoya's uh drawers oh yeah i've got this oh yeah i've got this it's crazy it's crazy artists have the best collections well uh, yeah because you're you know it, it's so fortunate to be around all these we you know sinkevich mignola you know ken and i all we all started at the same time really and we and i remember we with the first day that we met Mignola and all he's like, Oh, we got to swap, you know, and Jay, we got to swap all that stuff. And it's, you know, so being in the business and being around these people was really fortunate because we could do swaps or get things really cheaply uh, at the time. And, you know, and it, you know, the thing is though, it's never been the idea of worth is, was never, I used to, convince mom and dad to keep the comics because they were going to be worth a lot of money. But I really didn't care about that. You know, it was just something to say because I've never sold my comic collection. Uh, and the same with the original art, it's going to be more of a, probably a thing for my kids, you know? Um, but yeah, in incredibly fortunate to. I talked to Georgie and Mary, they don't care. So <laughs> Georgie gets it. Georgie understands. <laughs> Man. Oh my God! There's so much of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, to, we'll see that uh, later this summer. And uh, Peter Rowe, he, he mentions he's looking forward to uh, OAX as well. So he's going to get some stuff signed when he comes in. That's great. Peter oh, picked cool. up his ticket too just recently as well. So Hi. awesome. Great. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, I think we you know we've hit the two hour mark. I don't know if that's a that's a good cutoff point or not, but it feels like oh, one. Yeah. Oh, all right man. so Thank you uh, for me on hey it's uh Thank certainly it's my pleasure man this was this was a lot of fun it really was i i, I don't get to kind of sit back and uh, be like you know sit in the back seat and just watch this <laughs> the scenery go by so th this was great cosmo you can do this anytime you like Oh you know. uh, no no thank you maybe once every six months just if you force <laughs> me to but no you're great with the interviews all yeah. right all right well we do appreciate everybody hanging out tonight and uh participating in the chat it was a lot of fun and uh again george thanks for doing this it was a lot of thank uh, you it, it was educational for me as well and the thing is i'll be honest if you have more photographs like uh you know like the one you had when you with uh bernie Dan Green and uh, Jeff, I'd love, yeah, I I'd love to see those because that's one of the things, uh, the goals I, that I've kind of set to myself is for you know for the the channel and the work that I'm doing is you know being able to get some of these things out there that people haven't seen. You know, we there's not enough things recording the history of the of our of the business you know that yeah. we you know that we love, and uh, you know we need. I'd, I'd like to document more of that if we can, and you know, so maybe when we're doing your. Uh, you know your collection because i know a lot of those people pieces are from friends of yours and, and people that you worked yeah. with it'd be great if we had uh a few photographs to go along with them if you have them I, you know again i think you know that would just add a lot of interest uh you know i think to the overall interview for me and i think for the for the fans too yeah it's really fun uh, you know for the collectors out there it's you know and i think they everybody gets it it's like you know this uh although a lot of my students don't get it is that you know this the the work that that we collect 
and that we love, that stuff takes time. You know, it really takes time. And people have a false sense of the amount of time it takes to do work because they're seeing these sped up videos and it really takes time. And, and to help preserve all that stuff and love it and, and take care of it is really important, you know? So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great thing, but it's like, you know, uh, it's a weird thing that uh, so many artists have done so much work and they're like, I look, I think of Bernie Wrightson and his Frankensteins and all that. And I know he was pretty upset when he, when he was, when he passed away really, because you know, he did, I mean, he sold it for what he wanted to sell it for, but you know, mm-hmm. it's like I sold my Batman cover same way. And it's like, and they, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes when they're, when they're just out there selling for such huge bucks and, and the artists are starving uh, and don't have health insurance and, and, you know, stuff like this, it's, it, which is shame on the companies for one, but yeah. So it's great that there's a love for it out there and that people are keeping it alive, which is important. Well, I, I agree. It, well, it's uh, the thing is, I think the, you know, the artwork is finally being recognized for its importance and that sort of drives value as well it's not just yeah. the love for maybe the stories from which the art came from but yeah. i think it's finally getting the recognition that it deserves i mean when when comics can you know and can sell for seven figures and this you know for the over, you know over 15 years ago and the art was just fetching you know sitting at table selling for you know 50 dollars a piece or less it didn't yeah, seem yeah. quite right you know when it when a mass-produced comic can be selling for that kind of money and the art was just going for so little but uh, I mean, so so I'm, I'm kind of happy for that. But I completely get your you know your your perspective yeah. on that. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, that it's like doggone man. Who who would have guessed, right? I mean, I'm sure that uh, I mean I we're, we I started collecting, it, you know right all right of us did collect it and love it, but convincing the real world, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that, well, definitely now the, the real world does not need any convincing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> people realize how, how special and valuable comic art is. I mean, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it's not a question anymore. Yeah. Uh, very cool. So, all right, well, listen, I'm going to call it a night, but thank you both. This was a lot of fun. Thank and again, you. we're, we're going to do something. Maybe, uh, I'll pitch some dates to you guys in August and to have you back. Cool. And I don't know if Kazra will join or not, but uh, hopefully he yeah. does. He adds, yeah, <laughs> a little more than color commentary. All right, I'll, everybody. I'll stand behind him. I'll just drive down for it. There you go. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right, everybody. Good night.